start recording. So hello class, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is our fifth session and right now we are looking at the homeworks. So uh, students have created uh, or submitted their homework as form of pull request. So now we'll go with uh, each student's design and then whatever questions we can discuss or any doubts, we will just finish that and then we'll move ahead with the lecture. So Narin, here is the question for you. What are all the parameters which are required in constructor? Do we need to only uh, put those things which are necessary for an object or we have to, let's say if this car has uh, 10 uh, attributes, so do we need to pull all those 10 attributes in the constructor or we just need to keep which is essential uh, only those uh, properties inside the constructor? yeah it it is only to keep properties that are essential like as we have the freedom to create any number of constructors so depending upon type of object we want to create so we can include that attributes uh, that parameters in the constructor okay sure now so this design is good and uh, basically there is a concept called as getter and setter as well right now yeah. uh, so color of the car which is variable it can get changed so once you construct a yeah. car, if you will expose setter and getter and remove it from here, so your object has the flexibility of changing color at any time. And this is not required basically when you uh, you are creating the car. What might be, and price is again variable. So once, you, so there is yeah. no other way. In this design, this is very good design, right? Very good, excellent. Mm -hmm. But the problem is as soon as the uh, car price get changed, there is no way. So you created the constructor and constructor is called only once, right? You cannot uh, yeah. in an object. So if you will call constructor again, it will create some different object, but not this object. Now in this design, we do not have any way wherein we can update the price of the car as per the market, uh, you know, goes up and down. So we might have to take the car, car price probably um, away from this constructor. And then we have to expose a setter and getter method for that. Two things which are important yeah. is the car make and model. Because let's say if you have Toyota Camry, so it, it's never going to get changed. And whenever you make a car, of course, this is the primary thing you ask for. Okay, I want to buy Toyota Corolla or Toyota Avalon or Camry. So uh, let's. Uh, so now what you are going to do is um for next session like for tomorrow's homework so every student is going to update his design remove the fields which are flexible from the constructor keep the only the essential fields whatever fields you remove from here you need to provide the getter and setter for that probably for the make and model you can uh, just provide a getter because you don't uh, need to set it again you are already mm -hmm. already setting it when you are creating the class and they they cannot be set again the toyota uh, car cannot become a honda car all of a sudden right so based on that we will have this and the behavior you have put is mileage okay would you like to speak about these things uh -huh, no sir actually like i thought of creating some method there and calling it in my main class but i hadn't done that okay sure so we will add the behavior as we go and this one thing, this thing is good that you are taking all the inputs from uh, the command line and then you are aggregating everything and creating it here. So uh, whatever the ch design changes I just suggested, you just need to make that and uh, rest everything is awesome. It's good. Now we'll go with Mohan. So let's see what Mohan has. Seriously, Mohan? Mohan already knows uh, uh, Java from six months and he wants to jump up to spring. Mohan, can you please unmute and uh, explain your design? Is he there in the class? Mohan, hello. Sir, hello. Hello? Yeah, yes, champion. Tell me. <laughs> sir, uh, actually I didn't work on this car. Uh, today I will work it out and I will uh, let you know sir, tomorrow. So Mohan, uh, you already know Java, right? Yes. So you just studied three months before or you have like good exposure and everything, all concepts already clear on Java? 
No, I, I just exposed it with three months. Three months from I started bef- three months before. So. Okay, no problem. Because I thought you are uh, since you know when we started class, you were saying you want to go to Spring Framework and all that. So I said all the basic fundamentals are already there. So we will work on that. And tomorrow I want to see a good design from you. Uh, you already okay, have okay. a few classmates, uh, you know, commits and all. So get inspiration from there. Go to Google, do that. Ask questions to me. But at the end, I want uh, you know good code to be pushed from uh, your side, right? Okay, sir. okay, sir. okay. Okay, now let's see what Spurti has done. So Spurti has this class. So Spurti has uh, defined author, and she has the explanation. This is good. So Mohan Narin, uh, please uh, see. I mean, uh, whatever your code is, if it is having some uh, description then it helps but i think this is automated uh, description of the class because let's say if i am reviewing or your code you will uh, see it after some time or someone else does it, that so he should know uh, about the code what is the purpose of the class so uh, class means whatever the object you are trying trying to create so have some description now she has the car object okay and then she has same property of course almost same property she does not have door and color okay she also has this, this color make model and year so car make car model car year and this okay then she has exposed few getters yeah getters okay and then she has overridden this so far same comments as narin so far so good then she is uh, doing it in a hard coded way. I mean, yeah, like that is fine. So uh, for all uh, all of you guys, uh, take the input uh, from the command prompt and you can do it in a for loop. So for example, if user has to enter more than one object. So first you have to show the menu that, uh, hey, do you want to enter car? Pre- pre- press one. To enter another car, press 0 to exit. Or you can take input as yes or no. So I'll show you the example also. You will find that in my design pattern way, how that becomes user friendly. So we write program, but the uh, if they are not you know easy to use uh, by the user, then, uh, then whatever input uh, Naren has taken, we'll take something from that, whatever are the essential inputs. Based on that, uh, we'll invoke the constructor. Constructor would have all these things. And then we will expose something to edit a car. So car price gets changed or something like that. So we should be able to edit the car also. Let's go and I'll tell you how to do that menu stuff. Just a moment. Mm, we will open it here. You go to any of the design patterns. Let's go to factory. Okay, so uh, this is the example here. I'll also take notes and I'll send you. Let me keep notes. okay awesome so here what you are going to do is you are going to instantiate a scanner once and um, uh, this is repeat uh, repeat run flag is equal to one so as long as they enter one in inside this loop uh, you have to take input again and again that means and here the value will change whatever are the values so create a car create a pizza or whatever you will do right and once you will get all these so i am taking here just one input is a type and based on that uh, we are creating the object here and so uh, this is just a food for thought for you guys use your own imagination and creativity run this program as much as you want this factory pattern the main uh, uh, you know intention was that uh, i'll let you know about this also what this is this is a very important and 
a very uh, you know commonly used pattern which used across all languages so design patterns are not dependent on uh, any particular language may it be java c node or whatever this is the basic foundation of all uh, throughout entire software industry right so factory pattern means um, this will create the object for you and give you based on your desire so if you go to pizza they have just one factory and they give you wedge pizza non wedge pizza thin crisp pizza thick crisp pizza everything you have one interface which is called as one counter there a girl would be there or a boy he will take orders and based on the input he will give you in the same box same stuff right so here you will have some uh, uh, interaction whatever you run and you will feed your inputs here and based on that the underlying code will go and uh, generate uh, the object based on the requirement or options given and give it back to you so let's see what is there in the factory so we have different kind of non veg pizza mexican pizza whatever so these objects are been called optionally and then based on the what so each will have some cost so once we will go in design pattern uh, uh, you know session deeply uh, we will go uh, deeply over there today our main objective is to uh, finish up the object orientation what basic and it again is throughout java is pure object oriented language javascript is not so and uh, in javascript you can also achieve it there are some other ways how to do that but first thing first to understand the object orientation so let's go to the uh, official documentation of java and from there we'll uh, do java So I'll just uh, ping this also to you guys. So you guys will need. Okay, before we move ahead, commonly asked question in all interviews or for your learning, what is JVM? Who would like to explain what is JVM? Purti, you want to speak up? You are unmuted already. Uh, a JVM is platform independent, which can be, uh, it converts into intermediate code. That intermediate code can be run on any platform, for example, in Windows or in Mac systems or any kind of uh, Linux systems. It, it develops intermediate code, which in turn needs to be converted into byte code. Okay. Uh... So half of this is right, half of this is uh, wrong. So who would like to say what was the wrong part? Right part, okay. What's the wrong part here? Naren Mohan, uh, okay, let me just tell you. So Java is platform independent, but JVM is not. This is the concept which we miss out basically. Again, I'm repeating Java is platform independent, which means uh, uh, this is called as WOM, like write once and run anywhere. So if you write a Java program, you compile it into the class files and that class file can run on JVM, which is installed on any platform. The underlying, so I, I know in your colleges or whatever, since you are bright students, so you might be reading the uh, you know the journals tech journals and everything how things underlying work in computers so there is some circuit and uh, underlying uh, mechanism uh, to operate the uh, each whatever memory in the ram or rom and cpu algorithm unit everything so there are some instructions which happen inside when you write a program you are essentially operating those instructions giving it to ALU arithmetical logical unit and CPU central processing unit is processing it and based on that the output can either happen on your screen or it can happen to the standard output or wherever you define the program to it would run in that way 
so all those instructions are given uh, to the underlying hardware or uh, to the hardware basically so your operating system operates your hardware so uh, on the operating system you install a jvm and jvm is different for linux for mac for windows or whatever right so first thing is you have a jvm and on top of jvm you have a java class file so if i write a file on mac on my mac and i share that java class file the compiled code to you guys you can run it on the jvm basically but underlying jvm has to understand what byte code instructions or how it has to get the work done from that particular hardware or that particular operating system so jvm is platform independent and the beauty is that that since jvm is uh, you know uh, able to work out on any platform it makes java code as platform independent so any java code which gets compiled anywhere can run on any of the machines provided it has proper jvm if on a an android phone i need to run your java um, class file or java code but if i don't have uh, the jvm for android uh, then it won't work so there are android and there are several other platforms also on mobile which are coming so some of them have jvms for their um, uh, so that uh, interpretation can happen now next concept comes here very common interview question what is the difference between an interpreted language and a compiled language so i think narend would like to speak up something Narin. Okay, JavaScript is compiled or interpreted. Let's start with that. Or HTML is compiled or interpreted. Let's do that. So, Narin, you want to speak something on that? Yeah, like it is interpreted. JavaScript is interpreted, like. HTML is compiled because like it won't it, HTML won't interpret line by line and if there are any other like if any like missing of tags it like it won't consider like uh, we can get the desired output even though okay so what is what does what compi is, what is compilation means compilation? and what does interpretation means like uh, uh, I don't have much knowledge but according to Oh, me like interpretation means going through line by line. Correct. And compilation means? Compilation means taking block of code and executing that. So, uh, compilation means just the conversion, nothing much, right? Yeah. So the program will always run line by line, right? It's not like so you eat something so you will have one bite and one bite bite by bite you will eat you cannot eat uh, full pizza all of a sudden inside your mouth right so what happens is yeah. to say compiled means the java dot java file it gets compiled into dot class file that means we are totally converting it and once it's converted it gets converted into byte code which is a, a lower level kind of instruction so it, it is faster because and once it's get compiled if the code is entirely proper then only it's get compiled otherwise you would get a compilation error so which means that uh, the java bytecode is really optimized it's at the very low level and it's the instruction which are very fastly digested by any jvm or any operating system so it works fast now coming to the same thing how javascript or other stuff work so javascript how it would work there is no intermediate uh, code compilation or anything so it's just english like so it will go this line and then this line and let's say if at this line there are some errors it will break there so couple of lines it can work and then it will so line by line when it is going until and unless it doesn't hit a blocker it can be it can execute half of the program successfully and then it will throw up some error uh, maybe it's a syntax error also or whatever so that is why uh, javascript is fragile and it's not uh, that um, you, i mean in javascript it's fragile basically 
and uh, performance wise it's not as fast in comparison to java and all because java uh, has two layers first it's get compiled and after compilation again it's get interpreted in java there is there are two things first is runtime environment second is compile time environment so your code is compiled fine but let's say instead of passing the input which you are expecting as string let's go in this example let's go where okay so let's say uh, the user is supposed to input something in here and he is uh, inputting something else so the program will break at the runtime but since uh, uh, let's take another pull request to see this guy so uh, when you are trying to take some input from here uh, from the scanner whatever element you are trying to take it you are uh, expecting it for example as string but instead of string if you are passing something which is uh, not acceptable then when your program will run at the runtime it would go line by line and then it will break so uh, that is how uh, in java you have an intermediate compiled file which is dot class but in javascript or other uh, su such languages html and whatever you don't have any compiled code it runs line by line and as soon as it uh, encounters even the syntax error or anything else it breaks then and there so there is no safety uh, first level safety is not there uh, something like that so that is the advantage of uh, java that since uh, it uh, gets compiled uh, uh, so you are perfectly sure that your program is not broken it has proper syntax it has um, you know very good compilation and everything you just need to uh, execute it and once it's executed it interprets line by line so java is a compiled and then at the runtime is a interpreted language maybe it could be difficult or simple but uh, the, I think the concept is uh, straightforward and simple. Uh, again, uh, last time I'll repeat. Entire this code, whatever English-like code, it will convert it into binaries. That is the phase one which is called as compilation. And that compiled code would be fed into the JVM at different uh, platforms wherever the JVM is installed. But JVM is different for uh, every uh, operating system. So that is that as platform dependent okay so now we will uh, talk about inheritance and uh, inheritance uh, we will also implement it in some of the code here right away as we discuss this is go language let me close this let us open this So we have this class file. Basically, we have a car, car as an object. Now uh, there are two things. First thing is the uh, um, state, and second thing is the behavior. Now in the state, we can call couple of things. Uh, we can call properties. In the property, you get the model number and everything, which are uh, the property. Like you have some height, you have some weight. But then behavior, behavior is you can run, you can do programming, you can do singing, whatever. Every person has different behavior. Same way every car might have, let's say the sports car would have different uh, acceleration and the uh, as compared to the loading cars like the family cars or whatever. So their speed limits would be different and their maneuver their turning radius and everything the way they move experience feel engine everything would be different for them for sports car it's low gravity and for uh, other cars it could be uh, let's say suvs they are high and trucks let's not go uh, uh, related to car we will take one simple example which would be a person and then uh, person will make as the super class and then it would have subclasses so it will help us to understand the concept of inheritance so i will create another package 
he will call it as human now package level what happens is whenever you are trying to uh, do uh, so it's you have cloths now you don't want to put all cloths inside one big uh, almira you have small small shelves you divide the code so it becomes proper so as a programmer you need to learn that uh, don't make your code messy you have to structure it properly and in java they have this uh, concept of package means um, let's say this one com is your house and then there are different rooms for different people and now in my room i have different places for different objects so uh, the bad programmers what they would do they'll create everything at the source level or they will just have at one root level and that's all so we have to just learn this thing properly that we will uh, try to always segregate our code properly in packages when we are working in javascript uh, sorry in java in javascript when you work there is something different which is called as name spacing this is a funda without that also it works so we'll cover that later now inside human we will have a class which is called as person and we can call it as person dot java so uh, each one of us uh, is a person or you right now let's try to have just uh, uh, two properties basically so person probably has some name so we will say string and then we'll say name and then either we can define it as null initialization or anything else if you don't provide a constructor the um, uh, compiler or java provides a constructor by default with no arguments now we will have some method so we will and then we also make client now we have to make method so we'll say public void then we'll say food or eat since it's a behavior so we'll say eat and then we will pass the parameter what do you eat you eat food so this is a parameter so there is a difference between the parameter and the argument so uh, you guys think i'll ask the question uh, just think and i'll ask each one of you what's the difference between the argument and the parameter so we have this method and then we'll say system dot out dot print and we say name eats the food and whatever is the food very simple design no fanciness but whatever is essential is already there there is a person he has a name and he eats some kind of food now we have to create some objects for this person different objects and uh, then we will try to feed in something so let us have a client program here now the concept of the client is it's a starting point basically from where the program will uh, start and if you write psvm it writes public static void main so main program is the starting point void basically this is a method now this method takes arguments arguments is a uh, array of string args we called it as argument so coming back to the question very common question difference between arguments and parameter so this method uh, uh, takes some arguments which could be one string or n number of strings whatever and then it returns nothing it is a public public means it can be so these are the visibility level public private default and protected so once we understand inheritance then only we would be able to understand the private scope they are different scope 
so public means this method can be viewed from any other class and it can be used from anywhere but a private cannot be used outside the class that uh, if you so i'll uh, also show you in practical so your concept will become more clear so during interviews or puzzles or questions wherever they ask you already have proper answer for that now uh, main uh, public static void main this one is your method now inside that you can have uh, the person person name a scene so new is the keyword keyword means there are some fix um literals uh, in the language they are called as keyword so you cannot uh, reuse them as something else so for example if i am trying to make this as new it won't work so they cannot be used let's say if person name of the person in java if i want to make public sorry let's first understand that then we will move ahead so you cannot make this that person is the name of this then you say new person this thing is called as key if you will make public one it would take so anything which is not a key because internally java need some understanding and program is nothing but the collection of small small statements statement is nothing but the collection of small collection means the group of small small keywords so this keyword says this is a public class with name something like this now if you want to name the class as class it would fail because it has some predefined meaning in the language that is how it comes so frame a seam p r e m a s e e m so language is happy it says okay everything fine you don't see any compilation error nothing this is uh this object can be created and once it is created you can call a method on it so once you create the object you will get a dot operator so this one is your dot operator so dot operator exposes all the methods for you so by default in java everything inherits hash code to string all these methods inherit means so you have inherited few things from your parents and grandparents or whosoever is in your upline those methods for example color of my skin or color of my hair it's black and my skin is kind of brown it's not white or my hair are not red but in american people they will have some different hairs or whatever so they inherit by default from their parents or from their forefathers so same way when you are saying okay this is just a class which is called as client but internally when java creates this class it has a parent class which is called as the object class and it has whatever object class has that would be inherited here now um, ev everywhere these methods get inherited now in the person we can uh, we will distinguish a person can be a male or a female because male and female have different attributes little bit of different properties body shapes and everything so there we will see the inheritance but uh, just to understand initially in short way so we have an object and it has a dot operator and once we get the dot operator we will see uh, the methods which are available so we will see okay eat so person eats now it is showing compilation will fail and when anything which fails cannot be run or cannot be sent to the interpreter to interpret line by line if it would have been javascript okay that's flexible that's only interpreted there is no problem it can blow up there but this guy as a very design it won't allow you to blow up in the production environment or at the run time at the compile time you will see some message so prem asim eats vegetarian food v e g e t a r i n vegetarian food salad for example salad so this method whenever we call now we'll try to run the client program
fine so nal eats the food nal eats the food vegetarian food so nal eats the let's say vegetarian salad now why the nal has came we need to figure that out from where this came so the problem which has happened is we have not passed or set the name for this guy that so let me take you the code what was the code so i just did a control and then click so it takes you to the basic object so we have to add little bit of description this class is respons i will responsible to define a person so we have this thing as name so there are two ways either we can add getter and setter which is called as encapsulation so we say okay we want to encapsulate this field we'll have a getter and setter and then we access modify you want to make it private or package or protected or jaisa hai waise as is so we'll say make it private and what's the advantage of privacy is this attribute cannot be accessed from outside so i'll again okay let's understand it both ways first we don't have getter and setter and are we able to set the name and the answer is yes you can directly uh, do the name and you will say when a scene bad design though but it works and most of the new programmers or students they don't know and they do something like this initially So whenever the coding test happens or anything, there are less marks for them. So the brighter student who understand concept would they they do it the right way gets more marks and um, you know faster jobs or whatever. So uh, now let's try to run and see if this null problem gets fixed or not. So this got fixed. Prem Asim eats the food which is vegetarian salad. awesome but there are everybody lives the life everybody does the stuff but we respect the people who have the right way of living life and right is very subjective but say mahatma gandhi or whatever they also live the same way as you and me but they have some principles some you know waking up early doing good things for others good doing good things for themselves doing hard work whatever so people will say okay this is a good person and then they'll have more respect so same coding also comes up you can do the messy coding mess around everywhere if you are really serious to take programming as a profession if you are just doing it just for fun okay my parents have money let's spend and no if you are just taking it seriously then you have to learn the very okay what's the right way to code what are the conventions how should i go about it you will make mistakes initially but then you will learn and once you will start doing great stuff good way then you will be demanded everywhere uh, ibm or whatever good companies google they'll ask for you and you will get more respect even though if you don't work for google that's fine wherever you work for walmart or wherever you will get more respect because of your better code so we have to learn better coding right that's what we are doing right now trying to understand the basic fundamental and concept so as soon as you make it as private and then you will try to grab it here java says boss you are doing something wrong it's red because it's not accessible over here why it is not accessible because this is the modifier which says that this variable cannot be tweaked or touched upon from anywhere else rather than from this class itself so if this variable is not uh, accessible then how would i change the name then we have a method which is called as a set name set method so we will try and go there say okay 
person let's try to set the name and the name is whatever now we try to run this same results it's run fine not a problem so we have tried to set that's how we are trying to use the setter now let's try to have the age so i'll now second concept we are trying to learn is why we need this complicated way of doing stuff when we can we were able to easily do it just by the dot operator why we need setter and getter very basic question but uh, there is a, a fundamental behind it so let me try to put up a variable with age So we will make the ages now. Now we will try to set the age. So let's say my age is forty years. we can always override the uh, two string uh, if we want we can do that or we can just have our own method which we will call as public person details person details it won't take anything but it would not return anything either and what is going to do is system dot out dot print ln means new line so it would print and the cursor will go to next line that is print ln if we do print it will print in the same line we will say whatever are the attributes same thing the way you guys did in your code there we will have variables as name which is the property We will say name as age and heats and 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 okay and heats the and let's call the method itself and so so this is a string type and then we have to use the plus operator to concatenate the different thing then we will call the eat method itself so we will say this dot eat Now whatever would be the food which is getting passed from there so probably the food we are not uh, uh, you know putting it in some variable so let's say string food we are initializing it with null we are assigning the food to food we will make the food as private and we will use the food here and it's food okay awesome are there any errors yes there is an error because we do not have semicolon and then we can say this okay are there any errors do you see any underline no which means this program is fine it it will get compiled fine that there is no problem 
so let's try to run now as soon as you will run this you will say a hey, there is some error and what is the error so compiler will tell you exactly the file and the line number so as a beginner person when i was really really fresher i used to oh this program is not working what's wrong what that it was way back 15 years old nowadays you will get the hint that this is the particular file and this is the particular line this is the particular column of line and this is what and it also gives you the suggestion what is expected to fix it so let's try to see the line numbers so we see okay line number 13 so this is line number 13 then it says uh, 27 so if you see here you will also get the column number so right now it's 20 so you already know okay 27 which means here and then you also see the red stuff so how to fix it now it would get fixed so let's try to run it now now we have to get the details frame seam dot okay i misspelled this that is why let me refactor now if you are using any uh, whatever the ide it can easily do a refactoring so i made the change uh, at one place it got reflected everywhere so if you can efficiently use your uh, ide in integrated development environment you can be very effective in programming you can save a lot of time instead of doing it everywhere you just learn the shortcut keys shortcut options options no matter whatever language you use but those things will help so we have frame a same dot what we said details or what what was that so now i forgot it right so i just need to put dot and then okay this is called as person details okay now i am good so let me try to run this so it says Premasim eats the food vegetarian salad salad. This was the first method which would was which got called there. And then the second is Prem Asim has age 40 and eats vegetarian food salad. So I am going to refactor this a little bit. So once I come here, I'll not print it, I'll just set it. So there is some concept which is related to age which I am going to make you understand the very basic fundamental of abstraction why we made it abstracted and okay let's go there so age can I make the age as 10 can I make the age as 10,000 is it a valid age in this age when Rama Krishna were there they used to live 10,000 years but this is supposed to be an invalid input for age so in an object if you are directly exposing the uh, you know directly allowing the person to set age he can screw up this so instead of 40 years what about if I say my age is minus 40 is it a valid age can a person be you know more than zero he can be one year old or he is newly born but how can the negative age can happen so that is why people say that in your class this is a very bad practice that you are exposing your fields or attributes directly so never do that you don't have to do that make it private and then uh, uh, encapsulate it so let's try to make it private what does that mean now if you will make it private you will see error now you are not allowing the client program client program means whatever program who is trying to use your apis or your functionality might called as client program so i am using it from main but once you will learn better there would be some other program which will be calling your methods so now how would you prevent that the input is always proper uh, so what you can do is 
again we'll go and create the refactor so we have this generate options also we will say generate setter because we don't want the getter anymore because we are uh, printing it already from let me remove this because we are printing it here so whatever variable we need to access that is from this method itself so we are not getting it so we don't need the getter for it we already only created the setter for the age this is your setter now inside the setter you have to go with if inside the if you will say okay if age is less than zero let us just take one thing then you have to say this dot age is equal to zero which means there is some mistake by the input if anything is zero you less than zero minus 10 20 you can correct it and you will say okay at least it could be zero and then you you can print the message before setting it you can print a message what is the message since person age cannot be negative and e g a t i negative setting the default value to zero s e double t i n g so this is good your program this is called as robust that your program is robust if someone is trying to uh, you know break it with any negative values your program has already taken care of this so if value is less than this then you have a check same thing you can do with more than 100 if the age is more than 100 years cannot be more than 100 so setting the default value to be i'm just making 40 you can just add your age whatever so here also we need to make now this is a robust program so you will try to do set age let me first give it the proper age so this is called as happy path so a happy path means whatever is expected if you are doing that then we will try the corner case so the difference between a good programmer and a bad programmer means the person who takes care of corner cases in his program and you are not able to break then he's a good programmer and the bad programmer he will just think about one case okay age and then it could be extremes and then his program fails start giving error then he's a bad programmer so the job of the qe now in software industry there are mainly two uh, positions one is for qe one is for developer developer will write the code and the qe is uh, he will test the code he's also called as the tester so he'll put corner cases negative edge and everything and if your program breaks then he's a good qe if he is not able to think and break your code, then he is not a good QE basically. So even in future, if you get a job of QE, that is fine. Just pick it up initially, whatever job you get. But then uh, the main uh, task of QE is to think out of the box. Whatever system is expecting, think out of that. Break it, create a bug. Then he will say, okay, there is a bug related to the age in this simple program itself go ahead and fix then developer will come up with the fixes which we already 
which we have done already right now so negative age is not allowed we'll just try uh, this is the happy path and this is the negative path we will try to make so now the age once you give any negative age you get the message since age cannot be setting it to default as zero okay there is one bug what is that i'll tell you so it told me this message but ultimately it printed my age as minus 40 so let's try to make it as minus 50 so our program says that whenever the age is uh, negative it is setting it to zero so negative age should shown up here as zero but still it is showing as minus 50 so we need to fix that bug this is a bug so what was happening that program was coming here it was encountered it has encountered this uh, line of statement but still it moved ahead and then it uh, did the whatever the input was there it also make those changes so we will try to do a return so this will fix our bug let's see let's try what it does now we are running so this has fixed our bug because we have uh, inserted some negative values over here the program was smart enough to correct it now let's try to put 500 years as age so it has taken default value as 40 because age cannot be more than 100 so these are small things they are bugs but let's say you make it for banking application a small bug it and um, even if a difference of a dollar or cent and there are multiple transactions millions of transactions happening every day it makes a huge difference so we have to be very precise that even on the single getter or setter or constructor or whatever we are just taking full care we are trying to think about all the scenarios we are trying to safeguard whatever is the possible bug or situation can be we are trying to provide the defaults for that all these careful things will make us a better program so and i didn't cover this if and else because they were very basic i i know you guys must be knowing how to use if or how to use for loop or how to use these basic things so that's why we have we are not going in the syntax of that but we are just trying to understand the main concept and you guys can always ask questions whenever you get back uh, whenever you have any doubts here so uh, now what we understood here is the concept of encapsulation previously we have exposed the age directly and uh, what we ended up is having minus 40 year of age so we uh, made it uh, encapsulated by making it private so that no other class can directly access it and when we exposed a, a setter whenever someone is trying to use the setter we are having some validation on our side if the validation fails if the value is negative or extreme then we are providing a default value and allowing the system to gracefully pass now when we do a return is whenever someone comes here so how control flows control will first go to this line number and then it will go further down as soon as it goes to this block it will return if you don't have return that time it will again try to execute this block then it will again try and go and do this thing so if you have passed zero h even after uh, negative h even though you have uh, provided the default but this will again reset it so there is no point another thing just give me a moment i'm getting a call hello yeah i'll call you later so uh, this is another good programming practice is let's say if you have a very big code and your condition fails here or meets here then do you want the control to flow there and there and there till the end or you want to break it or return it from here itself so we will try always to break it then and there 
so we can save execution cycles whatever the code which is not required should not get run so return returns line by line whenever you know Naren was talking about okay interpretation means it goes line by line so that that is called uh, we call it as the control flow whatever he was uh, you know telling as interpretation what so control will come here will check from here it will return to this method and there is called as a concept of stack uh, method stack so this method is calling called by which method this is called by the main method main method called this so once the control comes here it will go there then it will execute once this block gets finished then it will come back again here then it will go to the next line in the next line it would hit the age set age it would go to this block if this gets satisfied it will return if this doesn't get satisfied from here itself it will jump and directly from line number 13 if this condition does not satisfy it, then it will directly jump to the line number 20 it will try if this meets it will go inside and return from here again back to the main the caller or if this condition doesn't match, match then it would go to this line that's how the control flow works so each line might not get executed so we don't say it as line by line because in that case if this condition does not meet these lines will not be interpreted or whatever so uh, maybe it, it it could be wrong or whatever what null or whatever but the control flows goes with the uh, uh, satisfaction of the conditions whatever are there so it gets satisfied then it came here now we will uh, uh, go back to the question called as arguments and the parameter so arguments uh, so once you make the method you make a parameterized method so you can make a method which does not take any uh, parameters let's say get name so the name called as whenever someone is calling this method he is supposed to get the name he is not supposed to pass anything but when someone has to set the name he has to pass something so whatever you pass we call it as someone will pass the argument as name so that, uh, that is called as argument in the public static void main you will say okay you can pass the string array argument here but parameter is so in method when you are trying to design a method you will say i will pass the i will have the parameterized method now this method will take two parameters So this thing is called as parameter you can add three four five parameter so at the call time it is called as argument same thing but at the design time whatever you will say the method is parameterized it can be called with two arguments that is the difference i'll also write it down for you just a moment the method is created with P A R A M E T E R S parameter and when it is called it is and when it is and and it is called with arguments. So I have given one interview initially. He did not ask me very hi-fi multi-threading or hi-fi question. He said, I'll give you a job. I have just very basic questions for you. I'm going to ask 10 questions. So he just asked, what is object class? Then he just asked me simple abstraction. And then I told him bookish language. I didn't had this concept by then. Whatever I told you that how age can be matched up. If I would have explained him or I might have knew this, I might have explained him, right? I didn't knew it. And then he also asked me about very simple argument and parameter and all that. So that interview, I blew up that interview. It wasn't great. And then I said, okay, from today I'm going to, I'll not do 10 things. I'll just do two or three things. But whatever, if you say interview, I know this. Then if he will, he is going to ask you question on that itself. And if you are able to say, boss, I know what I am talking about in detail, he is going to hire you. You will say, I also know Spring, I also need know 
हंड्रेड मोर थिंग्स एंड बॉस आई नो जावा एंड इन जावा आई नो दिस दिस थिंग यू आस्क मी एनी क्वेश्चन आई एम गोइंग टू आंसर यू टू दी मैक्सिमम वॉट एवर डिटेल ऑथेंटिकेट आंसर राइट इंस्टेड ऑफ क्रैमिंग then it uh, it makes uh, good because f- from the fresher he will expect you that you know overview of technologies and you know basic core fundamentals and they are going to train you uh, on their own frameworks every company every project has different uh, 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 requirements and technologies and everything and it keeps on changing also so you have to cope up with that today it's uh, java tomorrow it would be go then it would be something php pulp so many things linux so they will if you know fundamental of one you will also understand fundamental of two and three whatever you will do and if you have fundamentals you will write a better code something like that is the assumption it goes if you are messing up in whatever you are doing right now if they'll hire you and give you another project another language you are going to mess up that also that's how they assume so uh, so just uh, read theory i am not saying stop reading theory read the theory but whatever theory you get and whatever small small concepts you can try it out locally on your own computer on whatever fundamental that would give you a boost so we are going to uh, try inherit some of the objects so we have a person class but everyone um, so person are mainly divided in two categories so we will call it as gender so we will make a class as g e n d e r gender male dot java i could have called it simply name sorry uh, male and female but i just uh, you know want to be specific for now then we can refactor it so another good practice is you make the code and then you have to refactor once it start running then you think it through you say okay this thing will make more sense so you say female gender gender female so we have two classes now let's go to our client now let's try to say we have to make let's say spurti's object for example so okay l- let me not copy paste this for now next time i'll do that but let's go line by line so this is the name of the class for which i want to create the object Purti. Then we say new. We say person, and this has been created. Now there are different behaviors for both male and female, but there are common behavior for both. So whatever is the common is here. Male will eat uh, food, and female will also eat food, right? But there are different behaviors, of course, in male and female. So whatever uh, let's try to do one thing first we will try to uh, run this and see what happens nothing because in this we haven't called up anything or any method or anything right so in the female we will try to so female have different hobbies uh, than uh, male members probably voice is different and probably hobbies and shopping or something uh, dressing let's say dressing so let's say female wear frocks and uh, male wear pants and shirts now the nature has changed these days but when we talk about our uh, grandparents or parents so female were not uh, wearing pants and shirts so they have different dress code altogether so we'll just assume that now anybody is wearing anything and in america they are wearing anything that's fine so we'll just have dressing we'll say dress dress up okay 
okay so i have just defined the attribute which is called as dress up as f r o c k or f r o k i am not sure about the spelling but this is what it is but then we'll go to mail and then we'll say pant and shirt fine now we will inherit so we will inherit means extends person okay before inheriting i'll just give you the concept and then uh, it would be homework for you guys to finish this i'm going to push the code for you guys and you have to uh, finish uh, by adding some properties so spurti is a female gender right this uh, so we have to create it something like this now this will work so what do i have here so i have just a dress up whatever uh, we'll encapsulate this so what uh, i need to do here is spurti also eat something right uh, i mean any female gender also eat something so i would like to inherit all the properties from the parents so we'll say from the mother class basically so we'll make the person as the mother class and now if i do a dot operator eat all the behavior everything has inherited from the parent itself so in the initial part of lecture i was saying object gives everything whatever it has to the uh, method for every method uh, the person and everything and because it extends internally objects and then when we created a gender class it inherited it got inherited everything from the person class so you can make uh, another layer also like you can get inheritance down the way and everything would be there so now we will try to run a method on this we'll call it as eat so let's say spurti eat non veg or fish i am not sure i am vegetarian so uh, forgive me uh, if you are vegetarian and i am making you to eat fish but this is just for an example and then we'll say spurti can have person details also and then so age and everything is not there so we haven't uh, put the age there let's try to put your age also we'll just put uh, 19 or 20 or 21 whatever so we'll try to run it now so your name is supposed to get there okay so we have got uh, this this guy is working perfectly same thing we'll do it for narain sorry i make you female gender so i'll just correct this so this is inherited now we'll go same thing uh, requires here i'm just trying to do copy paste to be faster so we are going to finish lecture soon and then i'll also send you the recording now we are getting error in all these the reason mail does not have all these methods as of now why because it hasn't her inherited in anything why because it is not extending anything so let's make it extend which means as soon as it gets extended it will have everything the methods and the property and attribute now it's all green so we will make him eat veggies i'm sorry if he loves chicken and all that then i am just making him to eat vegetarian food and let's make his age as 20 and run this 
Narain. Name Narain has age 20 and eats veg. So everything is working fine. So in this lecture, we have just learned uh, what uh, inheritance is, what object orientation is, what abstract or uh, data abstraction is, what are getters and setters, and we did a hands-on. Now it's uh, your homework that whatever uh, modification you have to make in your last code, and then you have to add properties in your uh, person or write any program which has proper uh, package structure and it has proper behavior and uh, properties in the inherited way. So few common properties you are going to keep it in the mother class. You will describe everything and then in the child class you will have that thing which is not uh, common or which is different in uh, that way. You can take example of a vehicle, you can create a vehicle class and then uh, the uh, subclasses can be car or truck or whatever. So car and truck and everything has engine. So engine can be kept in the vehicle class from which you are extending. But once you go down, you can write number of tires because it is different. Truck has 10 tires or 6 tires but car has 4 tires. Motorcycle has an engine. So this is all your imagination. Just make those changes and then you can submit the assignment. I'll send the recording link for this program soon. And uh, tomorrow we'll meet uh, same time, 2.30. So uh, do you guys have any question or should I close the recording?